Let's make some super creepy chatter teeth for Halloween. You're going to need aluminum foil, plaster gauze, and cellu-clay. Start by shaping the teeth. It's really easy, just beginning in the middle of a sheet of aluminum foil, tear two lines horizontally, not quite halfway to the middle, and then start bringing that up, crumbling it in, bringing it up and then the other side down. That is your jaw. That's your open mouth for your teeth. The great thing about it is, is you can't mess this up because you're going to be covering it with plaster and cellu clay anyway. It basically just needs to be like a letter C shape. So once you've got that formed, get your plaster gauze. I'm using what's called rigid wrap. It's the same kind of thing that would be applied to a broken arm. You can find it at craft stores. I've also got a bowl of what used to be nice clean water. Go ahead, dip your gauze in the water, and the key is to really kind of squeegee most of the water out. It'll help make it so this dries just a little bit faster. I start by applying it to the top and making sure to really get it all the way deep down inside of the mouth. This usually takes two large pieces to completely cover the chatter teeth. I did find that it kept sticking to my finger, so using a paintbrush to kind of shove it to the back of the mouth really did work well. This next piece I'm just applying to any parts where aluminum foil is still showing. But you don't have to worry about that part too much because if you do have foil that still shows, then all you have to do is cover it with cellu clay. Rigid wrap or plaster strips dries pretty quickly, but to expedite the process, you might want to put it in front of a fan. Then, when that's finished, you can start adding cellu-clay. In fact, you don't even have to wait until it's dry. Cellu-clay is paper pulp. You make it by mixing up the dried pulp with water. You'll know you've got it when it feels like clay. Here I am just using that clay-like cellu-clay to shape the lip shape. So when you're applying the plaster, like I said, it doesn't matter that if you lose the shape or the look of the mouth, because you can always fix that when you start to add the cellu clay. You might notice that I'm kind of, um, I guess I would call it massaging or squishing the cellu clay quite a bit. That's because when I made up this particular batch, I didn't take the time to really smash down all the little fibers of paper pulp, and I had some dry pockets. So I'm really make sure to take the time to get that cellu clay to a nice clay-like consistency. Now, cellu clay does take a while to dry. So for that reason, you'll probably wanna put it in front of a fan if you do, or outside on a nice sunny hot day. If you do, then it should be dry within a couple of hours. After you've got your top lip, then go ahead and start forming your bottom lip. I made about, I think, five of these chatter teeth, and this is a craft that you can do pretty quickly. My favorite part was adding the teeth. And you might notice that I'm not doing the traditional slip and score that you would normally have to do with regular clay. I'm not using glue of any kind, sell you clay is magical and that it literally sticks to everything, including the back of your fingernails. It sticks to everything, so no need to prep, prime, scuff, scratch any surface. It will go ahead and stick. And the teeth were so fun to make because they are so stinking hilarious. Some of my chatter teeth, I only put teeth on top. Some of them, I put them on the top and bottom. Others, I then used an extra piece of clay to put a little bolt on the side, like the little part where you would wind up the chatter teeth. But really, some of them, I didn't even do that. It didn't even need it. Once the teeth were dry, I love this technique of um, painting something black and then dry brushing over it, especially with the cellu clay because the cellu clay has such a great antiqued, old looking kind of texture to it. So it really takes this painting technique really well. I like to use watered down black paint just because it makes it so that I can paint a lot faster. Otherwise, if it's too thick, it, you're just a constant battle of trying to get all of the paint in the little nooks and crannies, cran in the crannies and the nooks and crannies. So adding a little bit of water really does make it so your brush can move across the surface a lot easier. Again, putting this in front of a fan helps, but I'm using acrylic paint and even with a little bit of water, it does dry pretty quickly. 
Now, once that's dry, then you can get out more acrylic paint and start to add your red lips and your white teeth. And I did have to add about three coats of the red just to really make it pop. I did want the red to be bright even on the black. So that did take a little bit of effort. So here I am just making my first attempt of getting a coat of red on there. But just so you know, in order to get that really bright color, I did use a couple of coats of the red paint. From there, I did let it dry before adding tiny little white highlights. And the reason I am like obsessed with adding little white highlights to everything is because it gives things a really great cartoony look. And it seems to me to really bring things to life. So that's why you'll see a lot of those white highlights. But make sure your art has dried before doing that as I have zero patience. I usually don't. And then I end up smearing my paint and having to start over again. Ha! Ah, when will I ever learn? So once the lips are finished, I did use a little bit of gray paint that I mixed up for the bolts that you can see on the side. And then I added some white for the teeth. Let me show you. I used kind of an off-white by mixing a tiny bit of brown with my white. You can see it there over to the left. And I did that because I didn't want the teeth to come off as too stinking bright. And I wanted to add my little white highlights. So here I am just using a dry brush. Now this time I did kind of want to have that antiqued look. So I let the black show through quite a bit more. I did not seal these, but if you want your teeth to have a little bit of a shine when you're finished, you could definitely go over them with Mod Podge. However, the acrylic paint I was using did have a little bit of a sealer in it, giving the teeth a nice shine. Thank you so much for letting me share this project with y'all. I am obsessed with these chatter teeth. So thanks for letting me share.